Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, Episode 577. The 15 Reasons You Have Trouble Losing Weight. Numbers 1 through 7. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about anti aging medicine. Your host is Dr. Kathy Moffat, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging. Dr. Maupin is the author of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women, and Got Testosterone, the award-winning book for men that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of testosterone replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast. I'm Dr. Kathy Maupin, and today we're going to talk about something I talk about every day in the office to my patients, and that is why they can't lose weight and what to do about it. So I see people every day, and when I see them in the office, I'm seeing them for hormone replacement with pellets, but I'm also seeing them for getting healthy, and we develop healthy plans with supplements and with sometimes medication and also with changing their lifestyle so that they have a healthy lifestyle so they'll live longer healthier lives well oftentimes when i get to one of their complaints is i can't lose weight and they want to know why but when i get to that part and i start telling them the reasons they can't lose weight and what they can do about it they go it's like I said, oh, you can't have soda anymore. And they look at me like I've just taken their dog or taken their best friend. You know, so the rest of the conversation isn't worthwhile because they aren't listening anymore. So I don't want to have that kind of conversation with you, but I do want to go over the reasons that people can't lose weight. And they're valid and they're valid reasons. And if you truly want to be healthy and you want to get to your ideal weight, you're going to have to work at it. It is not easy. It is not without pain. It is not the easiest road to travel. You're going to take the travel, you're going to take the road less traveled because it takes courage to lose weight. You have to decide this is it. I'm not putting this off anymore. I'm not wearing a size 15 anymore. I want to get down to my size 10 or my size eight or six. I am going to do this. So it's just like any other project. You have to think about it every day. You have to work on it every day. It is not something that you, that I can give you a pill for and have it just happen. That never lasts. It never, it may work. It never lasts. So it, if you are looking at me and saying, yeah, yeah, she didn't have trouble with her weight. Well, (laughs) when I was a kid, I did. And when I went to college, I gained a lot of weight. And I went to um, a doctor who was lovely, a female DO doctor who was lovely in Kansas City, who sat me down and said to me, you've gained all this weight at college. Tell me what you eat. I told her she was horrified. And then she said, I'm going to put you on a, on a low-carb diet. And I'm going to have you eat this low-carb diet all summer. And you can't have coffee. You can't have alcohol. You can't have any kind of carb besides one piece of bread a day that was it and she get and i had to have a lettuce salad every day i mean she gave me a whole lot of fresh fruit and vegetables and meat so when i did that in three months by the time i went back to school i was thin i was very thin and at that time i didn't have a lot of muscle i wasn't exercising but i started to exercise at that time and it made me look better it made me look healthier and not skinny so I have a gene for obesity on 23andMe. They've given me my genes. I have a gene for obesity. I have a gene for diabetes that was passed down to me from my, uh, from my ancestors. And those two genes, because I don't have those two problems, are now turned off. So it's not as hard for me to stay healthy. You can turn your genes off. This is not a lie. It's not a hoax. If you live properly, you eat properly, you exercise w- properly, then you can turn those bad genes off and you don't get to use them as an excuse. Oh, my parents were fat. Oh, my, you know, my grandparents had diabetes and they were overweight and they died of diabetes. That doesn't have to be you. You can't use those kind of excuses anymore. 
you should have the courage to take this into control for yourself. And I'm going to go over the reasons people can't lose weight and what to do about it today. Um, let's start with the fact that what we were told a long time ago that all calories are equal is a lie. First of all, a calorie is the amount of energy in a certain amount of food. So that energy is basically heat energy. What, what kind of energy you, you will get in heat if you eat a food. But what it doesn't tell you is how your body is going to respond to that food. So if you eat um, an apple for 80 calories or if you eat a piece of bread for 80 to 90 calories, the apple is not going to stimulate your insulin, is not going to make you make fat, but the piece of bread is. That's the simplest way I can say it. If you eat the wrong things, those calories are going to multiply in your body and make more fat. Because every time you overstimulate your insulin, you make yourself insulin resistant. We've talked about this before, but if you eat a carb, your insulin over secretes from your pancreas. And that insulin is what's supposed to carry the sugar into your cells. So it's like the truck that carries, it carries blood sugar into your cells. So if you have had too much insulin for too long, you drink sodas, you eat desserts, you eat candy, then your body becomes resistant. So it closes up the cells so that the sugar can't get in. It's saving you from having diabetes or too much sugar in your cells. But what happens is the sugar goes, oh, can't get in. I have to store somewhere so they make fat. So one calorie of a fruit or a vegetable or a meat is quite different than eating the same amount of calories of carbohydrates. And most of us in the United States are carb addicts and insulin resistant. And if you're not already, when you hit menopause, menopause makes you insulin resistant. The more weight you gain, the more insulin resistant you are. So the, the first thing you do about that problem is that you are going to have to look at your diet, decide what you're eating, what you're not eating, and take the food that is junk food, sugary food, baked goods, and get them out of your site or out of your, out of your refrigerator, out of your house, out of your pantry. Um, you will, um, following a low carb diet, I have the low carb diet, um, at the um, end of my book, The Secret Female Hormone, and the end of my book, I got testosterone. Got testosterone. Um, so I have, it's called Dr. Moppin's Low Carb Diet. It's three pages. It's very easy. So uh, that is a way for you to start losing weight, is to change what you eat. You won't be hungry on this diet. You won't be overstimulating your insulin, and you won't be making too much fat, but it takes if you don't use any medication in addition to this, like metformin, then it's going to take a long time, but you can do it. If you need it sped up or if you feel like you're going to, you hit a wall, then doctors can give you metformin, a drug that helps you become insulin sensitive. So that's another way to help you, but you still have to eat right. You can't take metformin and not eat properly. It doesn't work. So. The second, the reason is, partial, is um, that your genes, the genes you were given from your parents, um, aren't working for you. You may have, I mean, God love the people that got the skinny genes. There's not that many of them. But the people who got genes for obesity or high blood sugar or um, I'm never full or I'm, I'm never, um, I'm always hungry, those genes are actually genes. And if they're not turned off by a great lifestyle, they will cause you to gain more weight. The favorite, my favorite thing, or my most unfavorite thing, is when someone says, well, I eat just like this person, and she doesn't gain weight, and I do. Well, because you can't compare yourself to somebody else. Your genes are different. Your environment's different. Your food is different. And you may be eating in between meals. She may not be. It, it, it really is not a com competition. You can't compare yourself to other people because we are all so different. So with the only the answer that I have for you for bad genetics from your parents and from your grandparents is try to tur turn those genes off. The study of turning the genes off 
is called epigenetics, E-P-I-G-E-N-E-T-I-C-S. Epigenetics is a study of and the process of turning bad genes off. And that has to do with how you live and what you eat. So in the next groups, I'll, I will advise you on what you can eat, what you can do to turn the bad genes off and walk away from your past and walk away from your family history. You can do that, but it takes courage because you're gonna to have to change your lifestyle and all the habits you've developed over your life and maybe even the habits that your parents taught you because they had those genes, they ate a certain way, they may have taught you a, an unhealthy way of eating. You may have to walk away from that history. Number three is, why do I not lose weight when I diet, but I don't exercise? And then the next one is also associated with this. Why do I not lose weight when I exercise and don't diet? Because you have to do both at the same time. <laughs> Losing fat requires that you stimulate your muscles, you exercise, you actually make those muscles work with your exercise. Muscles are where you're burning all your calories. If you don't have much muscle, you don't burn many calories. If you have a lot of muscle, you burn more calories. But if you don't eat right, you're just making too many calories for your muscles to burn no matter how much muscle you have. And if you're eating the kind of calories like carbohydrate calories, that is not helping your muscles. Your muscles need protein. So you can't out diet your exercise program and you can't out exercise your diet program. You have to do both at once. There is no easy way to tell you that. There's nobody who's gonna lose weight if I just give them a pill and they don't do anything else. And if you think that's true, because all the commercials say it's true, you'll find that what you're losing is water weight, not fat, and it doesn't stay. And the minute you stop doing whatever they tell you to do, it comes right back. So please don't do that. That's just a way to take you in and waste your money. Um, number five is you're over 40 and gaining weight. Um, and no, and people say, but everything I did before to lose weight doesn't work anymore. Well, unfortunately for women at 40, we start losing our testosterone. We're not menopausal yet, we're premenopausal, but we have 10 years of lower and lower and lower testosterone levels, which makes us crabby. And it takes away our muscle mass and we start having um, osteoporosis and we also start gaining fat and we become more insulin resistant than we were before. Some people have never been insulin resistant because they manage their diet and exercise, but at 40, all of a sudden, nothing works anymore. They can't just uh, fast for a week and lose weight because all they're doing is lo losing water because when you're insulin resistant, you're very efficient. You use every calorie and you make a lot of fat out of it. So um, if you're 40 and over and you are not able to lose weight in the normal way, it's a, a, a two-part treatment. Basically, you have to get your testosterone back in the most natural way. So pellets is what I do. Some people do other types of treatments, but getting your testosterone back will help your muscles burn more calories. So that will help that part. If you eat properly and eat a low carb diet and exercise your muscles, I guess that's three things, then you will be able to lose weight. Testosterone makes weight loss after 40 possible. If you don't replace your testosterone, you may be changing your muscle into fat, so you don't really, um, you don't really weigh more, but you're bigger because one pound of fat and one pound of muscle are quite different. You shrink when you make muscle and lose fat. You expand when you make fat and lose muscle. So that's what we see. We see fluffy people, fluffy bellies, fluffy boobs, fluffy backs. All of that happens because you are not making testosterone and, and using your muscles and exercising them and making more muscle. So that is, that was number four. If you're 40 and nothing works, then that you need to get your testosterone back in the safest way. Okay, here's where I get, I ask people what they eat in a day. So they tell me, they tell me what they eat and it's scary what they eat. 
Most of my patients will say they have cereal in the morning. Well, I think cereal should be taken off the market, except for small children, because cereal is a waste of calories. It has nothing in it besides wheat, which stimulates your insulin and doesn't really give you any uh, productive calories. It is sugary. It is not good for breakfast because it sets you up for the rest of the day to be hungry. So that's not a good breakfast. A high protein breakfast, eating a protein shake, having um, eggs, having meat, having yogurt, you know, those are any kind of milk products. Those are better for you as long as there's no sugar added than ever eating any cereal. And that includes oatmeal. Oat, instant oatmeal is just sugar plus a little oatmeal. So please don't eat that. Regular oatmeal that takes 20 minutes to cook, you know, on the stove, that's okay, but you can eat about this much, like a couple tablespoons, and that's it before you start overstimulating your insulin. So I don't advise that to be eaten as breakfast. Maybe oatmeal and oatmeal cookies, but the cookies would have to be made with a different kind of flour, not wheat flour, but more like a nut flour to actually be low carb. So junk food, chips, um, bread, all kinds of breads, cooked, cooked items, cookies, cakes, candy. I had a guy yesterday who told me that he eats one to two bags of, of the little Butterfingers every night. Every night! And he wants to know why his blood sugar is going up and he's got belly fat. Well, the good news is he got testosterone and so he looks a lot better. His muscles are better. But he's not doing what I asked him to do. And that is give up this candy fix. He said he's addicted to it, and I believe he is. So he's going to have to slowly decrease. That's what I told him, just slowly decrease. Every night he eats less and less and less until he's not eating candy at all. And that's my advice. I, can't, I said, otherwise, so I'm, I said, I'm a mean mommy. Here's the deal. Otherwise, you're going to be a diabetic. You're going to gain a whole ton of weight. You're going to lose uh, limbs because diabetes damages your blood vessels. You're going to be an invalid, and right now you're a very active 67-year-old. You're doing all the things you ever wanted to do. He does a lot for charity. He, he rehabs houses. I mean, this guy is a great guy, but he won't stop eating candy, so it's going to ruin him and his marriage and, his, and all the trouble and sadness it'll be for his family. So I was trying to give him the picture. I think he got it. I don't know. I won't know till next time when I see him. So don't be that person. Don't be the person that... Um, says, I'm just going to do whatever I want. Uh, I'm going to eat whatever I want. And add a salad to, to your diet every single day, a green salad, not pasta salads, not the salads that are just, they're um, posers. They're, they're not really salads. They're just pasta. So, or, or not potato salad, but green salads with all kinds of good stuff in it, cucumbers, peppers, all kinds of other things in it to give you all the nutrients you need and to feed the bacteria in your intestines. Bacteria in your intestines are, um, there's more of them than the cells in your body. And they do a job for you. They digest your food, but they also help you uh, absorb nutrients and they help make neurotransmitters so that you're happy. So you have to feed them and a salad is necessary. It also will give you the feeling of being full. It will also make you feel like You've been chewing a lot. Sometimes chewing is necessary for some people to feel like they're full. And you can't eat a salad really fast. You can't just gulp it down. You have to eat it. So the time that you take eating a salad will help you feel full by the end of it, about 20 minutes between the, the start of eating and feeling full. So if your meal takes less than 20 minutes, then you're eating too fast. So chew your food and eat your salads, and that will make your uh, weight loss even easier. Um, the, the last suggestion and why, and reason why people don't lose weight is a problem of not enough protein. And people don't know what proteins are. Um, meat, cheese, eggs, milk products, um, some nuts. There are proteins in some baked goods, but not much. So humans were meant to eat protein. We are omnivores. If we were not omnivores, as, as my COO Joe tells me, we would all have molars in the front of our teeth because we were meant to eat just vegetables. We're not. We're meant to eat meat and, and vegetables and fruit and um, some 
wheat products or, or grains. However, we don't eat enough protein. So if you want to know if you're eating enough protein, you have to actually go through a day and, and tally it up. And when I did, I thought I had a ton of protein because I eat meat and I eat meat or fish at, at dinner. I eat meat and cheese at lunch. Uh, I eat a protein, <coughs> protein shake in the morning. I thought I had enough. But you have to eat in, eat in uh, grams of protein half of your body weight if you want to stay stable. So if, if you're a 140 pounds, I'm not, but uh, I'm less than that, but it's easy to divide, then you have to eat 70 grams of protein that day just to stay even. If you're building muscle and work out that day, then you have to do more so that you can feed your muscles. So that's what people don't tend to do. They tend not to eat proteins, which I find unusual because it's very, it is very normal for us to eat proteins. We're supposed to eat proteins. So um, if you don't eat enough protein, you'll lose muscle and you'll gain fat. So you have to do this. And, and I do not suggest the protein in soy as a, like tofu, I don't suggest that as an option because soy has the side effect of, of stimulating estrogens. So if men eat a lot of soy, they get man boobs, belly fat. It is, it's not pretty. And, and it binds up their testosterone. So unless you're Asian, which Asians seem to have a genetic ability to metabolize soy well, but Caucasians don't seem to do so. Uh, neither do African Americans. Um, in general, you have to be Asian to do well with soy. So if you have soy in your food, you may want to look at the labels to see how much soy is added to everything. It shouldn't be. But, um, but try to avoid soy as a protein substitute because it's, it's, it will give you protein, but on the other side, it'll give you a lot of other side effects. So those are the seven, first seven reasons why you can't lose weight or someone can't lose weight. And I'd like to discuss the other seven next week when I join you and um, you join me, thinking about the first seven, and then we will go over the last seven reasons that you can't lose weight. I'm hoping you'll hear me, you won't shut me out, and that you will actually do these things to make yourself healthier. So please join me next week, I'll be looking forward to it. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the BioBalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit BioBalanceHealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at Facebook.com slash BioBalanceHealth.